Intelligence, talent, and charm are great, but more often than not, these aren't what separate the wealthiest among us from the poorest. Instead, the differences are in our daily habits. Do you realize that these subconscious, second-nature activities make up 40% of our waking hours? That means that two out of every five minutes, all day and every day, we operate on autopilot. It's true. Habits are neural pathways stored in the basal ganglia, a golf ball-sized mass of tissue right in the center of our brains, in the limbic system. This neural fast lane saves the brain energy. When a habit is formed and stored in this region, the parts of the brain involved in deeper decision-making cease to participate in the activity. However, we all know there are good habits and bad habits. I spent years studying the difference between the habits of our country's rich and poor, questioning hundreds of individuals. On the rich side, these were people with annual gross income north of $160,000 and net liquid assets of $3.2 million or more. I define the lesser off as those with gross income of $35,000 or less and no more than $5,000 in liquid assets. When I was done, he analyzed the results of my research and boiled down the responses to create a picture of what allows the wealthy to prosper where others do not. Set goals. What exactly do you want to achieve? Is it to climb the corporate ladder, accumulate enough wealth to retire early, or just get some extra dough to send your kids to college? Try to make each goal smart, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, time-based. The more exact you can make your goals, the easier it'll be for you to work your way towards them. Pay your future self first. For this one, it helps to think of yourself as two distinct people. There's present you, that's the you watching this video here right now, and then there's future you, that's the you in a day, a month, a year, a decade. What you want to do is take a fixed percentage of your monthly income and invest it towards your future self. I don't care if it was a great month, and I don't care if it was a terrible month. What matters here is you're paying forward your hard-earned dough so that future you's life will be just a little bit easier. Now, I'm not talking about buying that car or taking that vacation. Because really, that's investing in present you. And once you spend that cash, it instantly becomes dead money. But when you invest in your future you, it's living money. Money that pays out dividends and money that earns a return, getting you closer to real financial freedom, continuous and relentless self-improvement. Nobody, and I mean nobody, starts off from square one with all the skills they need to make millions. It just doesn't happen. Instead, you've got to consistently expand your skill set. You've got to improve the skills you already have today, and you have to become better than you ever thought you could be. Now, I teased this a bit before, but in sales, we're particularly lucky because the improvements we need to make the big bucks are easier than with other industries. But to win in sales, all you have to be able to do is understand your market, get in front of buyers, explain the value, cultivate the right mindset. That's it. Getting rich isn't a fantasy. It certainly isn't easy. But by cultivating the right habits, tracking your progress, paying your future self-continuously, improving your skills. And best of all, once these habits take hold, your success is no longer a matter of if. Instead, it's a matter of when.